What it do, what it do. It's your boy Q, and this is another episode of Let's Talk Bulls, your number one Bulls podcast in Chicago. And on today's episode, we're talking about the Chicago Bulls getting the victory against the Utah Jazz in a thriller of a game, winning 119 to 117. And not only did we get to see the Bulls play some late time minutes, some clutch minutes again, we also saw them get scrappy. They're starting to look like the bad boy Bulls. We'll talk about all that. After the intro. Give me the hot sauce! Give me the hot sauce, Bob! For the lead! Go! Did you not get the memo? Don't shoot me for the lead! I want to go higher! Oh my goodness! Welcome to the Let's Talk Bulls podcast. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new and you like what you see, make sure you hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that bell notification so you're notified when I drop more of these videos. And with that, let's get right into it. The Bulls won this game. They put in the effort, they grinded it out, and they did everything you want to see from your team in a late-game situation. And oddly enough, <laughs> the Bulls played another game that came down to them having to execute in the last two minutes. That just kind of seems to be our basketball. But what I do love to see is that this team is getting comfortable in those moments. They're not shying away from making big shots, and they're also not shying away from shoving other teams when it comes down to it. The Bulls have been showing some aggressive mentality, and honestly, I'm starting to want to call them the bad boy Bulls. You can see that they are a team that are together. If you mess with one of them, you got to mess with all of them, and that's what you want to see from your team. Show some aggression and show a backbone at all times, even if it gets you a couple technicals here and there. Now, with that, let's talk about the game. The Bulls, at the start of this game, looked like they had a pretty good control, right? Not only did they do that, throughout the game, they had one of their best shooting performances of the year. The Bulls shot 44% from the three-point line and 50% from the field, which really helped them in this game. And honestly, despite them having a lot of threes, this game was a game that came down to the wire. And that is because the Utah Jazz, even without Lori, are a good team. Right, They are young, they know how to play, they don't give up, and they just did everything to keep themselves close so they had a chance at the end. But when you look at this game, we look at the scoring, Kobe White once again played his heart out. The man is starting to really show why he's going to be the cornerstone of this team. 42 minutes, 25 points, 6 rebounds, 6 assists. 9 for 15 from the field, 7 for 11 from the three-point line, and two or three of those three-pointers were from a whole nother galaxy. This is what you want to see from Kobe. He was pulling up with no hesitation. He was not scared, and you can see he's starting to work himself out of that slump. And I'm not even going to say starting. He has worked himself out of the slump. When you see a game like this, when he's pulling up 30-plus feet multiple times, two of them were back-to-back -back and not caring, that is what you want to see from your shooters. You also had DeMar DeRozan, 38 minutes, 29 points, 6 rebounds, 7 assists. And DeMar was the king of the fourth this game. He did all the things that you love to see DeMar do in the fourth quarter. He made big-time baskets. He made easy free throws. DeMar has got to be one of the best free throw shooters in the league. Like It's one of those things where he's going to the line at the end of a game. It's almost clutch. You know it's going in. And that's a great thing. I would assume he continues his great stretch at helping this team out. He only had eight points, but nine assists. I was getting that ball moving around the court and making the smart pass. He also had two rebounds. Alex Caruso with 11 points, four assists, and he was honestly playing the type of defense you love to see. He was everywhere. And if this man does not end up being defensive first team, something's wrong with the NBA. Right? The fact that he's not even in the top five of Defensive Player of the Year right now is crazy. Alex does things on a nightly basis against players that are four times his size so much. It is, it's outstanding to watch this man play power forwards and still be able to put up a great defensive effort. Not only is he everywhere, not only is he making the smart plays, but he's stripping the ball from people. He's making the team better. He's giving people energy, and he's also coaching them on where they should be when they mess up. And that is why when you see Alex not on the court, the Bulls are a completely different team defensively. The man is a defensive GOAT. I love having him on the team. I hope we keep him. But the man needs to get more recognition. He deserves to be 
in the Defensive Player of the Year conversation. He most likely has no chance of winning it, but he should be in the conversation. That brings me to Vooch. 23 points, 12 rebounds, 2 assists. Vooch played big. He did what he was supposed to do. He got a couple of rebounds. He did what he was supposed to do on the offensive end, getting to the basket. You can see him and Drummond are really focusing on being big men. Get down low, get in the post, back someone down, and get your shot by the rim. And that takes me to Andre Drummond, 10 points, 6 rebounds. He was strong. Andre Drummond is a strong player. He did what a big center should do. He boxed his man in, he got the ball, and he attacked. Julian Phillips, 6 points, 4 rebounds. I do want to talk a little bit about Julian Phillips and what I'm saying. Julian is starting to really make me happy. You see him play, he's a rookie, he's young, but he has heart. And he has a confidence to him that you love to see from a rookie. He's not afraid to shoot the ball, whether he's on the wing, whether he's in the corner. He's also having times where he's trying to drive the ball into the basket. I mean, it turned into a turnover this game, but I like the aggression. He's always trying to do something on the court that would be positive to the team. And even as a rookie, he's not afraid to go in and get the offensive rebound. And with the athleticism, I definitely see once he puts on some weight, he's going to be a terror on the boards. You also had Javon Carter. I'm not going to lie. Javon didn't do that bad. Seven points, one assist, three for five from the field. He did pump fake a shit ton again, and that's just who he is. He's going to pump fake. It doesn't matter what we do. It doesn't matter how we want to look at it. He's going to pump fake at least seven times a game. He's going to airball at least once a game. But I got to give him his props. He still made a couple good shots in this game, and the Bulls did their thing. The team got a little bit of minutes, six minutes, didn't do a lot, missed his one shot from the field. Um, teams seem to really be playing him knowing he's a shooter. Even though it is his first year, it's his first few games in the league, that first game when he made those three-point shots, he let the league know what's going to happen. And you can see that they're rather leaving Phillips or they're rather leaving Io open than Batim when he's at the three-point line. But this was a great win from the Bulls, okay? They had the lead. They got ahead. The Jazz fought back. That happens. It's the NBA. No lead is safe. But the Bulls kept pushing. They fought themselves back up to lead again. Lost the lead a second time, but pulled it out in the fourth and didn't crumble 100%. And last, I want to say again, the Bulls are looking like the bad boy Bulls. I'm loving this team gelling together and looking after one another. You saw it multiple times in the last couple games. They are not taking any bullshit. If you come after a Bulls player, they're coming after you. It's almost like the Bulls Twitterverse, right? You come after one content creator, we all going after you. This is what you want to see, a family that loves each other. They play hard for each other, and they're not backing down. But I got to say, I like seeing Chris Fleming Looked like he was ready to throw a punch, okay? The Bulls coaches are even at a point where they don't take no bullshit. And that's what you got to love as a Bulls fan. But thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, once again, leave a like, leave a subscribe, hit the bell notification. What's going to be happening? We are on our way to 500 subscribers. I'm currently working on something special for you guys. It's going to be a clothing line that's released with this channel hitting it. And also, not only is that clothing line going to be available to you guys, it's going to be something that is not just Bulls related. It's going to be a basketball lovers type of clothing line. So if you like it, pick something up when it drops. Other than that, I hope you all have a great night. I will see you next time. Peace, y'all.